Hi everyone, uh, here we go with another video for our class and today you're going to be very happy to know that it's a short and sweet one. Um, this one is about using technology for language learning and teaching. So in brief what I'm going to do today is just uh, talk about why we use technology and maybe some benefits as well and then I'm going to give you a list of different ones that I've used in the past that I like for teaching and I'm not going to go through each one because I feel like probably you know some of them and the ones that you don't know maybe you can spend a little time and go in and check them out but the thing with technology is as you know every year there's something new so I don't want to focus too much on what we've used in the past. I think it's more important to realize why you're using it and how it can be beneficial in the classroom. Okay, so let me go. Uh, the first part here is the purposes. So why should you use technology in your classroom? Um, first of all, according to the 12-year curriculum guidelines, it is necessary for us to, to uh, promote what we call digital learning or digital literacy in the classroom. So we want our students to not only learn the content of the subject they're learning, but also to become literate in all types of lit uh, in all types of technology. Sorry. Now, in today's world, that should be pretty easy because most kids are born using phones and tablets. And um, you, you may have noticed, I don't know if you have any younger brothers or sisters, but like young children usually when they see a computer screen they automatically try to touch it right even if it's not a touch screen because they've been born into this touch screen world and so technology for them is just an everyday tool and that also will add to the authenticity of learning because that's something that they're used to using okay so not only the 12-year curriculum guidelines but the bilingual policy of 2030 also calls for digital uh, learning Okay, the second one is that technology is really good because it gives you different avenues for teaching and learning. So instead of just being you in front of the class with your slides or the blackboard and you teaching, there's just so many different things you can do. Every single lesson can be something new or something different because of technology. And also you can give students much more complex and much more meaningful tasks. Okay, third is it creates a multimodal classroom. Remember, we want multimodality, which means the students are getting many different modes of input in the classroom. So it really aids in listening and um, reading as well. And then, of course, you can uh, add some other tasks on top of that. Okay, four, it prepares students for the future, of course. Now, number five, in the textbook by Brown and Lee, it talks about it's possible that technology helps the environment in that um, there's less paper waste. If you're having students use their tablet in class, then of course they're not wasting paper. Um, but this one maybe is a bit controversial because the more tablets and the more cell phones we're creating is not really great for the environment either. But it maybe is saving trees, so it's one way to look at it. Okay, so what are some benefits? Uh, it promotes independent learning. I think I showed you guys in class one day using Quizlet so students can learn vocabulary on their own and then there's a million other sites that do that as well. It promotes autonomy. It can increase motivation. Um, students find it more fun to learn using tablets because that's what they like to play with. Uh, it allows for increased assessment opportunities and it promotes authenticity in the classroom, like I said they're doing the things that they like to do and at the same time they're learning okay so i'm just going to go through a few of my um ones that i've used so i'll briefly introduce them and then as i said maybe you can check them out maybe for your classroom task or next semester when you do your teaching um, demo you can maybe think about incorporating some of these or something that's similar so number one is quizlet uh, we use this one in class it's for learning vocabulary and you can test spelling and comprehension and there are some matching games. The second one is Padlet, which we've also used. So it's a notice board for students and teachers. Um, students can put up their work, they can record, they can draw, they can video themselves and then upload that. 
So lots of different functions and they can also interact with each other. They can comment on each other's posts and things like that. Okay, the third is Pear Deck. Pear Deck is like an interactive slideshow. So as a teacher, if I create my slides with Google, Google Slides, there's an extension called Pear Deck. And what you can do is ask questions on the slides. And then when you run it in class, the students have their own tablet or cell phone and they answer the questions that you pose on the slides and then all of the answers will show up on the teacher's screen so the teacher can share the answers with all the students. It's great for like asking some open-ended or brainstorming type questions because you can, the students will answer anonymously so it doesn't show their names, but then you can show all the answers on the board and or on the screen, sorry, and then the teacher can go through one by one and discuss whether it was good or bad and, and how they can improve. Okay, the next one's Kahoot. I think everybody knows that one, so I won't explain too much. But one thing about Kahoot, if you're going to use it in your class, um, one thing that I've noticed teachers do is they run the game, but they don't ever give any feedback after the questions. So if you're gonna use Kahoot for fun, you should also use it for learning. So after every single question, if you notice a lot of students get it wrong, you should stop and deal with it or at the very end of the game come back and go through every question and find out why they chose the wrong answer and let them know why the correct answer is the correct one okay quizzes is kind of like kahoot um, if you've never used it the difference is is that they the students will go at their own pace so you can make like a 30 question quiz online and students will go through it at their own speed so it's not all together. It's how fast can you answer? You can keep going faster and faster. And at the, it still collects points. And at the end, there's still a winner. Uh, Seesaw is another classroom app. It's really good for teachers to assign homework to students because students have to log in to the platform and then they all have their own name. So if I have a classroom let's say I'm a junior high school teacher my class is grade one class one so I have class one one every student has their own little box inside and then when I give you an assignment they get that assignment and then they have to upload it so as a teacher once all the students upload their homework I can see on one screen every student's work and same thing they can take pictures they can record themselves they can video themselves and they can upload all of that so it's similar to padlet but it's more well suited for actual classroom usage in that the teacher can every student has their own um, space inside okay the next one is jeopardy this is a game and it's more of a Q&A type game where students can um, be assessed on their content knowledge. And then Google, of course, Google has so many things. There's Google Classroom, Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Sites, Google Meet. And if you use Google and students usually get a school Gmail, then they can sign into everything and it's really easy to connect everything through Google Drive. So it's quite uh, functional as a teacher. Okay, now a few websites. Um, the first one is called Lyrics Training. This is really fun for students who want to practice their uh, pronunciation and listening. It's one of those websites where, and you can check it out if you haven't. I know I've shown my students before in maybe listening and speaking class where you can choose any popular song and then you listen to the song but there are some words that are blanked out and you have to type in the word that you heard so you can choose some songs that you don't know and really test your listening but it's kind of fun okay second one is cool english this one is geared more for younger learners this is uh made in taiwan and I think students need to log in with their school um, IDs and things like that, but it's very interactive as well. There's many different games and learning um, platforms and apps inside. There's even one voice recognition one where students read a sentence and it will give them an assessment based on their pronunciation. But you should be careful with stuff like that because it's not always 100% accurate. I tested it out a couple of years ago. Maybe it's better by now. 
And some of them I couldn't get correct. They kept telling me I said the wrong or something like that. I, I can't remember what word it was. Okay, third one is Raz Kids. Again, this is more for maybe elementary school or junior one, junior two, but it's got thousands of online um, ebooks and they're all geared for learning. If you're able to get your school to get the budget for this, as a teacher, this um, service is really fantastic because you have a classroom again and you can give your students books to read for homework and all of those books have a comprehension test as well. And one of the cool features is the students can record their voice and then as a teacher, you can listen to it. So you can give the students actual speaking, reading type homework and you can listen to it. And it also keeps track of how many books they read. So as a teacher, you know, you can encourage your students to read more books and then you can follow along with what they've read. Um, the level gets pretty high. It's designed for American or native speaking children. So I think it goes up to probably like grade six, grade seven American level, which is pretty high actually. So I, I think most of our junior high school students would be able to use it. But Raz Kids is not cheap. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of thing where maybe like we used it in my old school and we had to get um, the students to pay for it. If each student pays for it, it's not so bad. Maybe one or two hundred dollars for the year. OK, and the last one is Epic. Epic is also an online uh, reading site. It's free. Um, you can sign up for a school account, but you can do it for free. And as a teacher, you can also assign books. But these ones are a little bit more for younger learners. OK, so I told you. Oh, sorry, sorry. One last slide. One last slide. I got carried away there. OK, and the last thing I want to talk about is equipment and software. So in the classroom, even if you don't have or don't want to use all of those websites, you can still just use equipment like tablets and iPads, cameras, cell phones, video editing software, slideshow software. You can have your students take their camera, take a picture of something and then give an oral presentation or a written description. You can have students do a role play and videotape it with their cell phones and then watch it and then edit what they've said and then do it again and then upload their uh, role play into one of those um, uh, like Padlet or uh, Seesaw because students may be afraid to do it in front of the class so maybe it's more fun for them to take out the iPad. One student stands with the iPad, those two do their role play, you videotape it and then other things you can do is have them turn that into some kind of show where if they have to type in the uh, subtitles of everything that they said and they can add some stickers and make it into a video. Students love this kind of stuff. But at the same time, they're practicing their speaking and listening. You can have them write their own short movie. So write the words and videotape themselves. Uh, there's just so many different things that you can do. Uh, slideshow software, of course, make them give a presentation using some kind of slides like PPT or something. Uh, some things I've done with children before, uh, I had them do the life story of a drop of rain. So they had a slide, first slide as a picture of one drop falling into a lake and they had to write a sentence. Uh, the raindrop fell into the lake. And then I asked them, okay, so what comes after that? And then, so they went and found a bunch of pictures. Okay, next one was um, the duck drank the drop of water. And then the next one was the duck went to the bathroom somewhere else and the drop of water came out and they, they had a whole cycle. And this kind of thing students find is really fun. And at the same time, um, they're still learning. Okay, that's it. So I did promise short and sweet for this video. Um, I suggest that you take some time and go check out some of those websites and maybe you can also brainstorm some that you think are better. There are tons out there and you can think about using that in the future for your own teaching. Okay, thanks everybody. Take care. See you next time. Bye.